Hello, this is Philip Brooks with Packwoods Brooks Knives here with a uh, simple little scenario showing you how to quickly clean up a cheap store bought axe handle. If you have on an axe that's starting to bust up from over strikes and just has that real nasty burnished coating on it. <clears throat> So, you could start in with a sanding sponge to get all this coating off, and it'll work. The fastest way to do it is to save your save a sanding sponge for um, finish work. And start out with the spine of your knife. Make sure it's sharp. And just start scraping it off. Takes that nasty varnish off really fast. <clears throat> Let's see if I can go the other way for this stuff. You'll notice that I try to keep keep the blade away from me if I'm pulling this way, which I wasn't doing beforehand. I switched, thank heavens, but. If you're going away from you, you can switch it to where the blade's up, to where if you miss something and you skip, you hit the spine of your knife against the axe head, and not the blade of your knife if you're coming like this, and say like over here, you go in, you could chip the edge of your knife if you're doing it that way. If you're doing it this way though, You're only hitting the spine of your knife. <clears throat> so the idea is just to go around Scrape it down to bare wood. So improve the feel because there won't be all the little nubs where dust got on the um, got on the wet varnish and the wood started to fuzz up because of the moisture of the varnish and it gets all that bumpy, lumpy, bumpy fray stuff. <clears throat> I also want to try to stick with where the grain is. Like here, there's, there's grain that comes out this way. If I grind into it, my knife spine is sharp enough that it wants to dig in and bust off those grain, uh, annual rings. So the easiest way to stop from digging in is just to flip your knife to a drawing position and draw against those annual rings. Like so.
you'll be able to tell if you're there in person what the difference between the real dark shiny look of the, the varnishes versus the nice clean wood coloration. Now, since I'm getting closer to my hand, I'm going to flip around where I can stick my thumb on the side of the blade. And if I say like if I, oops, it's probably not in frame. So say if I nick my hand, I'm nicking it just with a sharp spine instead of the sharp blade. If instead I was going like this, I came up, I could slice chunks off. So let's. So almost done. See how fast this is this is going. Doesn't take that much to do this. You can always go back through and smooth up all of the fuzziness that uh, happened as you were peeling in very rough strokes to quickly get all that varnish off. Or you could do the next thing that we're going to do, which is just use the a $2 sanding sponge. which is a good thing to keep around anyways for tool maintenance, especially when this one is a medium and fine. It's one of the do it best brands. It was only two bucks. Okay. So that's good enough. Um, if you want, you could save all these chunks of shaving. I'll bet. They go right up in flames. Yep. 
It'll burn like crazy, so you can always put that in something, if you so desired. Just want that burn up. Next thing you want to do is find which side is your coarse, or excuse me, your medium. And that could just be as simple as just feeling. You'll be able to feel the difference. This side is the court or medium. So you just take that, go round and sand. Then you just want to sand this down until it's smooth. Which, since all you got to worry about is small fuzzies that got kicked up by the knife, this should go relatively fast as well. Good thing to beat out your sandpaper. Now this end, usually, the ends on these axes are a little bit too big and bulbous. So that's basically where my hand naturally sets, is right after that crook. So I could come in here and cut this off. And I've done that with other axe handles. But I don't know if I'll do it for this one, being that it is such a, a long axe anyhow. Uh, cutting down a little bit of that length isn't going to matter too much. At least to me. You got to figure out what you want to do since if you're doing it with your own axe, it's your axe, it's not my axe. So, can't tell you exactly what to do. Can only tell you what you can do. Okay, we'll switch over to the fine side now. And we're almost done. By just doing the fine side, we're just basically buffing all the fibers to the point where they're nice and soft. I don't think you'd have to go any further than this generic fine. For an axe handle unless you have really sensitive skin that could get nicked by the slightest little thing but this is going to be pretty smooth when we're done anyway so Here's one other thing, as an extra addition, I'm going to end up wrapping this with some uh, woodchuck rawhide that I, 
I made earlier this this year. So there are two things you can do with this split out right here. One is you can take and carve the entire thing out and uh, get it to the point where it's straight again. Or you can carve this till all the little fuzzy fibers are cut off and down to solid wood and glue in a sturdy piece of wood in there and then shave that to shape and then wrap it and that's probably what I'm going to do there's a bunch of scrap wood sitting around here where we where we split for the house here so that might be the way I go and then just wrap it but we'll worry about that a little bit later I'll see how long this has taken and uh, it might be added into this I don't know we'll see but see how that just peels out so that'll peel right up to the end of this so I'm gonna take my knife and cut just at the top of where that uh, split starts and just cut in a shelf Real simply. Now, all of the fuzzy material is gone. There's a nice little shelf that I can set a, another piece in. I'll carve right to that, that design. And then uh, once the glue's dried, I can just cut that right off round and uh, put a cover covering on. So for right now, you're done with your knife and you're done with your sanding sponge. The next thing that you got to get done is putting a new coat of oil on it. Now this could be as simple as you just have... Uh, you maybe want to put motor oil on it or something like that. I wouldn't really recommend that because then that could get metal shavings in here. That could irritate your hands. Um, you could go with a grease, say like uh, last week's bacon grease, or um, uh, you could use um, like mink oil or something like that. You could also use a beeswax or Greenland wax. Um, what we're going to use, though, is just uh, coconut oil. This is an older can that, or older container that I don't really want to eat because it's been sitting around for so long. But the nice thing about coconut oil is that it gives the piece a very rich dark luster and that's about all you'll need at least for the first time around so you just warm that up with your hand get all of it off this little stick And you just want to rub it in. We'll, we'll want to avoid where we're going to try to glue for right now. So we'll go all the way around that. But this spot will be left un unoiled to where we can... Uh, get good glue adherence. And just work it back and forth. And just let the heat of your hand melt the coconut oil right into the wood. Come up 
up to the top, and you can get all the oil out from between your fingers. And rub that into the top of the eye. Help seal that off. Then we'll just set this in a warm place to where the wood can absorb as much as possible. And that will be all done. So let me check, check my time limit and I'll see if I bring you along for the wrapping of that, that neck.